to 1977 when that policy was put in place uh, from that last reform than you are to today. And we're, we're uncompetitive and we need to work on that and we're very welcoming of the legislature's posture uh, of wanting to have that discussion. There's several different proposals and we're wanting to make sure that we don't lose that energy in the details but we, that we can accomplish some property tax relief um, if not reform, we prefer reform, but we're not going to look past relief uh, for businesses and corporate and income property taxes. Uh, another very exciting thing that's happening this year, uh, and I sat in a, another meeting on it this, or just last night, is with the Iowa Department of Economic Development. Uh, the governor is uh, with Debbie Durham. Uh, Debbie Durham is, uh, uh, is the, the governor's appointee to, to lead the Department of Eco Economic Development. She's from Sioux City, Iowa. She's led the Siouxland Chamber up there for a number of years. Uh, and she's actually the immediate past chair of the Iowa Chamber Alliance. Um, and she has uh, um, put forth with the governor a proposal to, uh, to revamp the Iowa Department of Economic Development into a public-private partnership uh, to more closely emulate what's been successful at the local and regional level uh, with economic development at the state level. And we think that's very exciting. In fact. That's been one of our future policy issues for years, and we're excited to uh, have the opportunity to capitalize on that. I think that there's, um, there are, of course, naturally concerns, and everybody wants to make sure that it's well thought out. Uh, I know the Attorney General's office has been called in to really make sure that we think through how this would work between having a private entity and a public entity working together, and how the boards work. Um, but uh, uh, there's a lot of effort being applied to make sure we get that right and that we could put that forward, and we're excited about the prospect of having that as a more nimble, uh, more in tune with the private sector um, uh, organization to help us attract jobs and grow jobs for our existing employers here in Iowa. Uh, those are just a couple of our feature issues, um, and, and there, are, there are any number of others when you get into, uh, into taxes and regulatory issues, uh, but really when, when we're up uh, at the Capitol on a daily basis, what we're trying to do is ensure that there's um, that there's a good conversation, a productive conversation um, that, that's looking at how we can address these issues, that we can look at them and that they are complicated, and we can look at all the stakeholders that are affected, and we can try to work together uh, to make sure we can push that through the best we can. Um, it's not easy, <coughs> but, uh, but we do see that opportunity, and we're excited about that. Um, I think I'm getting close to my time. Um, Do you want to take questions? Sure, we can open up the questions and then uh, uh, if you want to go to the... Uh, <coughs> to the elected officials, does anyone, anyone have any questions for John and the work he's doing at the uh, ICA? If not, we'll turn it over to... Uh, so everybody's 100% supportive of property tax relief? <laughs> yes. Okay, we'll move uh, At this point, uh, I'd like to just go down the line give you an opportunity to talk about some stuff you're working on here this session. Uh, what are some priorities that you have? And <coughs> Representative Olson, if we just start with you, and uh, the mic's in front of you, and uh, we're right down the line. Thank you. Well, good morning. Thanks for participating in this forum today. Uh, in the past, I have uh, stated which committees I'm on. I'm chair of environmental protection. And a couple of things that we have done uh, in the last week that would affect the business climate is to put a cap on the Title V uh, air quality uh, permits. Uh, that cap is at $56 a ton. And then the other issue was uh, we have limited the EPC Commission's <coughs> rulemaking authority. The EPC Commission, while it does serve a purpose, uh, seems to have gotten out of hand occasionally in the rulemaking process. Uh, gets a long ways away from legislative intent and we are trying to rule that, uh, reel that back in. There are about three bills that address the EPC Commission. Uh, one of them in Commerce Committee and uh, one in uh, Environmental and it is the hope that once we get through final week that we can come up with one good product out of the two or three bills that we have a chance of getting through the Senate. <coughs> the other issue is the Watershed Council. Uh, the, the part of the authority of that has been in the uh, Department of Natural Resources. It's going to move to the Ag Department, but that brings uh, League of Cities folks, uh, the cities themselves, county officials, commodity groups, everyone uh, along 
to the table to try and address some of our watershed programs. It is not only the uh, farming community, the ag sector that's involved in this, it's the uh, cities and counties as well. Those are two or three of the main issues that have uh, been taking place in the uh, Environmental Commission. And I'll look forward to your questions later. <coughs> Thank you. Um, the committees I serve on are agriculture, commerce, ways and means, and I serve on environmental protection along with Steve. Uh, we passed several bills this past week out of agriculture, and uh, my busiest committee has been commerce, and we deal with a whole range of uh, issues there, anywhere from banking to utility work and uh, all kinds of business issues. Uh, then in the ways and means, we passed a 20% income tax across the board cut, and that did pass the House. And um, we will, I think this week, we'll have some bills coming out on property tax reform and uh, commercial property tax reduction. So I look forward to that, and uh, so far I haven't seen bills on that, but uh, they'll be coming. Hi, I'm Phyllis Thede, and uh, the committees I serve on are um, EPA, I'm the ranking member for that. I'm also on ethics, also on natural resources, also uh, serve on the human resources budget sub. So I'm kind of busy. Um, uh, you know, like Steve said, we are. There are some bills that are coming up, and uh, we're working on those. And I know um, I'm not sure, Steve. I'm going to bring it up. The bottle bill is going to be coming up here soon, and um, we'll. That'll, that's dead. Oh, good. He said it's dead. Okay, never mind. We won't be coming up. Um, <laughs> um, that's good. Yay. Okay. So anyway, um, that's really kind of about it. And I do have another topic, but I'm going to let everybody else talk, and then we'll come back to me. Okay. Uh, my name is Joe Sang. I think I'm the only senator here today. Uh, uh, one, uh, I think Robbie's having a baby and Sean's up in the morning. It took me seven hours to get home. It took me six hours to go from the Victor exit to Davenport. I got to see the Riverside Casino, Wellman, Iowa, Kelowna, Iowa. I came in on 22, wherever 22 is anyway. <laughs> six hours on the road. So. Uh, the thing I want to talk to, I am the Vice Chair of uh, Ways and Means. Uh, our targets came out uh, about two or three days ago. Uh, we were actually $14 million under the Governor's budget. Uh, that is 6.1 something. We we're $14 million under the Governor's budget. Uh, there is an emphasis on the Senate Democrats' budget uh, to uh, spend $20 more million on education. Um, I want to address that. Uh, I'm not sure what part of education it's going to. Uh, we still plan on having a commercial property tax proposal from the Democrats on the Senate side. Uh, it will mainly be towards small businesses. It would uh, mainly be maybe the first 50 to 100,000 would uh, be uh, actually uh, uh, ex exempt and it would not be a uh, unfunded mandate on the cities, counties, or uh, education. Um, the state would pay that, so if you'd say uh, $30,000 property tax uh, commercial uh, at maybe a 3% rate, that would be about $1,000 a year off, off your uh, commercial property taxes. Um, we don't know what the ceiling would be, and it's still in the infantile stage. Uh, the other thing I want to talk about, uh, Maggie Tinsman, I don't know if she's here, but she has this economic proposal uh, on uh, funding education and also uh, actually uh, all this stuff has been out about the neurons that develop when you're a child a trillion neurons if you don't use them start using them and at three years of age you lose them uh, it's been shown later on this would be a long-term proposal uh, the incidence of crime and the lack of uh, actually a person going out and getting a job it it, it, it really weighs heavily on the economy um, this proposal, actually, uh, the early child development is economic <coughs> development. Uh, what they want to do is engage businesses, foundations, unions, maybe chambers, in investing in high quality early childhood education. Uh, this would be actually a one-to-one -one development of a public-private partnership would be matching one-to-one -one dollars, therefore expanding the state and federal and the local dollars towards education. Uh, 
to try to get this together, I don't know if we can do it by the end of the year, but uh, it would probably